Okay, right, let's get straight into it. Two weeks before your exams, what should you do? Now, for A-level people, I know your exams are a bit further away, but the principles in this video stays the same and it will help you out. So I would recommend to watch this as well because when that comes, you'll be able to take a lot of golden nuggets from this. So I know right now, look, you're going through a lot of pressure. You're going through a lot of stress. You can feel the pressure mounting up, like things are getting more and more serious with not many, much time left. And I get that, I appreciate that, I understand that. It's not easy because you're here trying to revise for your exams, but at the same time you're trying to deal with all these emotions coming to you left and right and you're struggling with that. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you literally five steps that I've written that I personally feel would help you and be very beneficial for you with two weeks left. And I've also written one point where you can use during your exam period. I don't see anyone else really talking about it. That's gonna be really a game changer. Now also, if you can, I would really appreciate it if you can give this video a bit of love, a thumbs up. That would mean a lot just because, man, I've been uploading a lot, man. If you look at the amount of videos I've been uploading, tell me any other YouTubers in this field that's been uploading the way I've been uploading. It has been literally crazy. So would really appreciate it if you can. If you don't, I great, that's fine, no problem as well. So I've written the notes here, I've written my points because I just, I just don't forget. Now the first point that you need to do, or you should have done is, you should have finished your content by now. But this time, you should have finished everything. So what I mean by content is the theoretical side, right? Everything of that's theoretical, you should have finished by now. Now I also know that some of you, or maybe most of you that's watching this, haven't finished all the content in the other subjects and you're worried and you're stressing yourself out and you're thinking like, shit, I haven't finished everything. My life is coming crashing down. How am I gonna cram everything in? I'm gonna say something very honest here with you. And it might sound harsh, but I'm gonna say honest because you need to hear this. There is no point in worrying of things that you could have done in the past. What is done is done. You thinking about the past of, I wish I'd done this or I wish I put more time is only going to waste your time right now. It's gonna be even more detrimental. You don't want that. What you should do right now is focus on what you can control, which is a present moment and the task that you can do right now. That is important. Yes, I understand it sucks. Yes, you should have started earlier. Yes, I could have revised earlier. Fine, cool. It's done. You'll learn from your mistake. You'll make sure that next time this doesn't happen. Okay? So what I would say right now is you probably, you need to list, this is the practical aspect I'm gonna share now. You wanna list down all your topics, the topics that you still have not covered. Now, there's two things here. If you think you're gonna be able to cover all the topics, great, then do all the topics. If you feel that you're not gonna be able to cover all those topics within the time frame that you have now with two weeks, then this is what you should do. You wanna list down all the topics. From those topics, what you wanna do is then look at the exam questions. See if you're able to see some similar exam questions that's been coming consistently, right? Not exact exam questions, but something similar within that topic range. And then once you're able to figure that out, Look at the marks for those exam questions. See if they're the heavy hitters, the big ones. Because yes, you can do the one or two mark question, but if you're looking for improving your grade, you want to tackle the heavy hitters, the ones that carry the big marks. So try and organize your studying those topics based on that. Look at the ones that are coming up, have been coming up in the exam question, not exactly the same, but similar. And look at the one that has more marks. Focus on those topics. The ones where the topic is only one or two marks, I wouldn't worry about it just from the perspective of right now, you don't have the time to do everything. You need to be strategic here. This is how you become strategic. This is how you become a bit more organized with what you do, with what you have. So focus on those topics and then as you do them, this will reduce your stress level. You'll feel better about yourself and make sure you tick it. As you finish these topics, tick it because it will make you feel good about it. So that's what I would say with that one. Now the second point is practice exam questions left and right. Now this is, this is the big misconception that these people are saying like on YouTube and all that stuff where they say, do exam questions again and again and again. It's complete crap, man. Because the reason why is, listen, if you've done an exam question or a topic question or exam paper and you know how to do it, why the heck are you doing it again? Especially when you understand it and you know what to do. You do it again just to make you feel better, to make you feel like, oh, I can answer it. Let me ask you this question. When you redo that exam question, are you actually trying to take trying to do this exam question as you've never done as if you've never done this before or are you doing it when you are you answering the exam question from your memory because you've done this a couple of days ago or a week ago so you're recalling it from there be honest with yourself which one are you doing i guarantee most of you are doing the second option you're recalling from your memory 
And you know why that's bad? I'll tell you why that's bad. The reason why that's bad is now because if in the exam they come up with a different type of question, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if they come up with a completely different type of question? This is the problem. This is the problem where people just kind of be so generic and they say, oh, just do exam questions. You're okay. You'll be fine. Shut up, man. You need to understand what you're doing because if they now twist the exam question in a different way that you've never seen, what are you going to do now? You're screwed. So this is where now in this, when I say do exam questions left and right, don't just do exam questions for the last two, three years. Expand on that. Go for the last four years, last five years. It doesn't matter if it's outside of, like it's the old syllabus. Two plus two is always going to be four. Just because the syllabus has changed doesn't mean that's going to change as well. Right? Unless they take that topic out of the syllabus, then you should still be able to answer those questions. And as you do more of those questions, those different type of questions, you're expanding your mind. You're opening your mind to things that you've never seen before. Isn't it better for you to do that now when you see an exam question that you've never done and like, oh shit, I don't know how to do this. Okay, let me open my textbook. Let me open my resources or my notes and try and figure out how to answer this exam question. And the reason why is because when you go through the exam question or when you go through the exam, should I say, and they come up with a question that's similar to the ones that you've done before, you'll be like, hold up, I've seen this exam question before. Yeah, okay, now I know how to answer it. That's where the marks come. That's where you can be, that's where you can, that's, that's the difference between an ordinary person and an extraordinary person. That is the difference between an ordinary person and an extraordinary person. The ordinary person will just do the bare minimum, two or three years. The extraordinary person will go out of his or her way to do even more questions because they're not satisfied with just this. They want to keep pushing, keep pushing the boundaries. Which one are you? Be honest with yourself. So when you do these exam questions, don't just do, don't just follow these bloody idiots that just say, oh, just do, just, just repeat the exam questions again and again. Okay, fine, do that. You're not learning anything. It's like saying this, right? You're brushing your teeth. You know how to brush your teeth. This time now, you don't really think about when you're brushing your teeth because you know how to do it. It's recalling. It's the same thing with exam questions. If you know how to do it, you're wasting time. There's no point of doing something you already know. Go and now take that time and effort into doing another exam question that you've never seen before. And that's where this opens up. That is where this opens up to the way where it's like, okay, I thought I understood this content, but I didn't understand it in this way. Okay, now let me rectify that and let me re, you know, learn that again properly. That is extraordinary. So that's what I would say with practice exam questions. Now, the third one, <laughs> this is a bit controversial, but I'm going to, listen, I'm just be honest. I'd rather just say as it is because I think it's the truth and it will help you. It's study leave. Some of your schools will give you study leave, so that's great. Now, other schools will not give you study leave, and you need to be honest with yourself here when I'm going to tell you this. You need to ask yourself this question, right? If your school does not have study leave, will you be able to get the work done when you're at school during this exam period? Will you be, like, will you be able to focus? Or do you feel you'll be able to focus even better and be more productive if you were to study at home? What would you answer to that question? If you need to think about it, stop this video and just think about that first. Would you be able to be more productive and effective if you're at school? Or would you be more productive and effective if you're studying at home? If, you're, if you chose the first option, then you're fine. It doesn't matter if you have study leave or not. Now, if you chose a second option, this is where you need to make a decision and maybe you could talk with your parents about it so you can, your parents can send a letter to your school saying that my child needs, is okay to stay at home to work. Because the reason why I say this is, when you're going through these exam periods, this period that's going to come, every single minute, hour is critical. You do not want to be wasting your time. If you know you're going to be in school and you're going to get distracted by your friends and so many things going around, you're wasting time, valuable time. There's no point in you going there. There's no point in you being there. If you know that, listen, I could put this amount of time at home. That's what I did. I didn't, I didn't go to school. I didn't because I knew if I'm going to go to school, I'm not going to get shit done. There's going to be all my friends around. It's just no point. It's a waste of time. And then I actually can't focus. And then when I go back home, I'll be like all worried and just like stressed out because I haven't done anything else. Nah, forget that, man. I'll stay at home because I know I'm going to be disciplined. I know my mind is going to be disciplined when I'm at home. I know I've got a timetable and I'm going to stick to it. I'm not, going to, I'm, not, I'm not going away from school just to mess around at home. If you're going to do that, then I don't even know why you're watching this video. You're going home to study. You're going home to be productive and making sure that you get your shit done. That is why you're doing it. 
So if you feel that you are going to be that type of person, talk with your parents about it and see if you're able to take that you know, study leave to stay away from school just whilst your exam periods are going so that you can get the work that you need to do. It's very important. And the fourth step, the fourth step, oh, there's five as well. Yeah, the fourth one is don't be talking to too many people. Let me explain on that. Let me explain and expand that. It's something that I've done and I it's kind of messed me up a bit here and there. And it's that you're going through a period right now where you're very vulnerable. And when I say vulnerable is your emotions are very high. Any little thing that someone says or does, you will be it will be magnified in your mind. So when you talk to a lot of these people, your friends or other people, when these people say, man, there's so much things to do. I'm worried. I'm nervous. I feel the pressure, man. I, I you know, have you done this? There's so much this. Their pressure and doubts that they're going through is going to come and rub off you. And then you're going to start getting doubts. Unless you're mentally very strong and focused and you know exactly what you're going to do, that, and that's not going to you know, phase you, that's fine. But for most of you, you're vulnerable. So it means that anyone that's kind of had this kind of worry kind of energy and stress and all that, it's going to rub on you. And then without, when you're doing something different, those thoughts and doubts will just come to you as well. You don't want that. You don't want to be in a position where, you know, you're stressed out because of other people around you. Cut the people out. In this period, don't talk to many people. You have your timetable. You have a set structure and time of how you're going to do it. Stick to it. If you need to talk to one or two friends, that's fine. Because if it helps you out just to kind of talk, fine. But you don't need, be, you don't need to be talking to the whole school, man. Or you don't need to be talking to so many people. Because they sometimes, what is that said? Oh, I forgot the thing. It's like... There was something, it's like, it basically it was saying like, sometimes it's best to not know everything. Because when you know too much or when you hear too much, it messes you up here. Sometimes it's best to be oblivious and just carry on as you're doing. Sometimes it's best to be oblivious. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a quote. From this context, by the way, a quote on this context. It's not, it's not good to be oblivious all the time, but in this context, it's better to be oblivious. Because it just means you can just focus on what you need to do. So don't be hanging around with too many people. Don't be looking at, you know, and also, those, oh man, this is, this is the worst of them all. The snaky friends, man. The snaky idiots. You know the ones where, hey, have you done the, have you done the work? Man, I haven't done no revision. I've done absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's going to be hard. But those idiots, those ones are the exact same people that are putting like six, eight, nine, ten hours of work at home. But they just don't want to tell you about that. They're just, gonna, they're just saying that they haven't done it so that you don't do it as well. That's what they're doing. They're very snaky, man. Crafty little idiots. If you see people like that, man, stay well clear of them, man. They're toxic. They are poison. Don't be around those idiots. Don't be around those kind of people, man. Seriously bad. So this is why, you see, can you see what I'm saying, right? If you start talking to too many people or you kind of hang around with too many people, all this shit is going to come into your head. You don't need that. You keep your head clear in your own path, in your own structure, and that's it. You're good. The last point, so the fifth point, this is very important. Yeah, this is probably the one, this is the point that I said at the beginning that I don't think anyone has really said this is you need to make sure you have a timetable during your exam period. So right now you have a timetable of how you're revising before your exam period. Now what you want to do is you set yourself a timetable when you're going through your exams, when you're doing your exams. You should now know what your exam period is like. Right, you have your timetable. So, for example, Monday you have physics, geography. I don't know, but the way you want to do this is this, and this is what I'm going to explain to you why this is so important. Say, for example, Monday you have physics in the morning, and then geography in the afternoon. You want to have a timetable so, so that you know, okay, once you finish physics, what are you going to do? What are you going to study, and how are you going to study for? Obviously, to really, you're going to be studying for geography, right? Because you have a geography exam. Makes sense. Fine. After your geography exam, what are you going to study? What are you going to revise? You need to have a structure. You need to have a timetable. The reason why I say this is so, so important and could be also a game changer is because if you don't have that structure, you are going to be moved and swayed by your emotions when you've done those exams. Think about it. You finished a physics exam, for example, right? And it didn't go well. It didn't go according to plan. Now you're dealing with all these emotions. Oh my gosh, I failed or this is not going to go great which means now you're not going to have the focus and attention to be able to revise for your next subject because now you're dealing with all these emotions. Is that what you want to do? You don't have time for that, man. So this is why the time, the timetable comes into play because it's like, okay, it didn't go well, but my timetable says now I need to study for biology. 
so I need to go and study for biology. It gives you that discipline, that structure, that focus point that, okay, you're feeling like this, but your timetable is bringing you back to the center. It's like, okay, yeah, that's fine. You're feeling like this. I need to bring back here because I've got a timetable that I need to focus on and actually carry forward. The power of a timetable and discipline is, it, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't say how much powerful it is in these kind of periods when you're so vulnerable. So have that structure. You should know what your timetable is like. Every single day during those exams that you have, you need to have an idea of what you're going to be studying. Exactly, is it papers? Is it certain learning a certain content? How long for? Have that. Very, very important. Because you will get swayed by your emotions. I guarantee you, when you do these exams and it doesn't go well, it will mess you up in your mind. Especially if you start talking with other people. Don't be talking with other people as well. I need to make a video on that as well because that's so important. Don't be talking and comparing with other people. That's the worst thing that you can do. Go back home and at school, whatever, and then focus on what you need to do next. That's very important. Set yourself that timetable during the exam period. Everything starts from zero. When are you going to start? Peace.